to draw a general shame of the Central Anatolian cultures before the Assyrian trading colony period by looking at architectural patterns and development revealed by the early Bronze Age strata at Pultepe Kanish, which I am now focusing attention. Long-term excavations uh, which lasted uh, more than a half a century by Tarsin Özgüç illuminated not only the second millennium colonial period, but also the early Bronze Age, the formative stages of this age to a lesser extent. The 18th level at Kültepe, uh, which was reached during the excavations by Tarsin Özgüç is dated to the beginning of the early Bronze Age. Of course, due to uh, circumstances, it could only be reached in a very small area. The aim of the excavations carried out in recent years was to understand the political, cultural, and economic situation of Anatolia, and especially Kultepe, in the periods before the Assyrian merchants came and the modalities on how and why this very complex system developed. Continuing excavations at Kultepe with its multidisciplinary approach, along with resolving some of the much debated problems, has also provided a hitherto unforeseeable insight into the social economic system of the Near East. Besides, the new discoveries provided much new information on the religious system of Kültepe and Anatolia. This is just going to be a very brief introduction. The 18th level, uh, which was reached during the excavations by Tarsin Özgüç is dated to the very beginning of the early Bronze Age. And handmade monochrome ware with a red burnished surface is one of the very distinct ceramic groups in this phase. Alongside the monochrome red burnished group, red on buff painted ware and fluted ware of copper age, Alishar, can also be seen in this level. The limited extent of the excavations carried out to date, however, does not enable us to shed much light on the culture, particularly the architecture and settlement plan of this phase. So, we plan to go to the early stages of the early Bronze Age and even earlier periods, which Tarsin Bay could not date for various reasons. Previously, it was uh, believed that the early Bronze Age settlement at Kürtepe concentrated only in the core area of the mound, since no studies had been conducted on other parts of the site. Since there were monumental buildings in the West Trench still standing, it was not possible to descend to the early, early Bronze Age without removing them. For this reason, we preferred an area where we could go to the older strata where the settlement was not dense, as dense and where more modest structures had been built. In 2015, we started to a new excavation in the North Trench with my Japanese colleague, Professor Kontani, and we uh, started to work uh, the, just at the north of the Washington Palace and in an area that had been destroyed by the villagers a century ago. According to the uh, C14 datings, uh, the, we reached the beginning of the early Bronze Age in 2016, which yielded interesting results. We were able to identify at least seven different building levels in the early Bronze Age uh, three phase, which is represented only in four levels in the Western Trench. 
the moon uh, building levels in that area can be explained by the fact that the simpler structures must have had a shorter lifespan than the monumental buildings. According to the initial results, the early Bronze Age settlement extended to the northern end of the mound, leading to a realization that the size of the early Bronze Age settlement was much wider than we thought before. The occupation of such a large area before the colony period is important to show how advanced the settlement was in the early Bronze Age. We don't know any other contemporary early Bronze Age settlement in Anatolia larger than Kultepe at present. According to the C14 datings, we had already reached to the beginning of early Bronze Age one. Not only the uh, C14 datings, but pottery analogies also say that say the same result. Black burnished pottery, which was discovered in the levels uh, 16 and dated about to the beginning of the third millennium BC, is a good indicator for establishing relations with the neighboring sites as well. Eventually, this result is in accordance with the neighbors. Large vases, sorry. Large uh, vases with black burnished exteriors and the brown slip inside are common in Arslantepe in Malatya, especially at the beginning of the third millennium as in Kurtepe. During the final phase of uh, early Bronze Age II, around the 25th century BC, a new era began in Anatolia, new and different developments in both settlement plan and daily life emerged. These developments could have been accelerated by the arrival of neighbors from the south who wanted to benefit from Anatolia's natural resources. Following the more simple plan units and relatively modest buildings of the early Bronze Age one and two, the monumental structures that emerged during the third and last stage of the period reflect not only the architectural developments at Kürtepe, but also hint at social change in central Anatolia more broadly. The plan of these buildings suggests uh, suggest that the source of inspiration for the monumental buildings constructed at Kürtepe at the beginning of the second millennium BC was actually based on cultural developments both within Anatolia and Kürtepe during the early Bronze Age period, as well as a result of international relations at that earlier period. For example, the jewelry found at Kürtepe has wide geographic distributions from Ur in Mesopotamia, Troy in Western Anatolia, and even Polyhony in the Aegean, perhaps as a mutual exchange of gifts between the kings or allies or as a dowry. Yet, as yet, uh, the, these as yet unpublished luxury objects were made of silver and gold and were recently found in early Bronze Age burials at Kultepe, strongly attesting to the existence of relations between the two regions, such as West and uh, Central Anatolia and even more to the south to Mesopotamia. Even though contacts were established with culturally developed societies where writing was known, Anatolia had not yet developed or borrowed a writing system in the third millennium. So the earliest information about this region and the period is the legendary king of battle, Shakamari text on the deeds of King Sargon of Akkad and his grandson Naramsin from the version in the Hittite language written 800 years after the death of Sargon. The king of battle made war on the city of Burushatun, maybe Ajemihud, because of the complaints of merchants who settled down in Burushatun. And in later years, Naramsin defeated the coalition of 17 kings and among them were Pampa, the king of Hatti, and Zipane, the king of Kanish. Significant developments took place during the transition uh, into the third and last phase of early Bronze Age. 
important differences from the previous period are observed both with daily utensils and in settlement planning. A more prosperous lifestyle is generally evident in settlements of this period alongside the introduction of certain previously unknown elements. A main reason for this acceleration of prosperity must have been the link formed to the southern neighbors for the purpose of exchanging the mineral resources of Anatolia. This led to a local development of new mining techniques and resulted in sharing raw material resources and products in a well-developed and systematic commercial network. One of the most important developments in the later centuries of the early Bronze Age II and into the three is metallurgy and the subsequent search for important ore such as tin used as an alloy for bronze. Metal ore mining in the Taurus Mountains, beginning as early as the early Bronze Age II, may have been one of the main catalysts for the expansion of trade networks in the early Bronze Age III period. In the last phase of the early Bronze Age, uh, we also find new uh, concepts in emerging in architecture and deep changes in the plans of the buildings. At Kultepe, three consecutive monumental buildings have been excavated in the west trenches of the mound, built on top of each other, and each destroyed in a violent fire. These buildings all represent the third phase of the early Bronze Age. The oldest monumental structure belongs to the stratum 13. According to the excavations undertaken in 2016, this was a huge complex measuring 70 by 55 meters. The complex is composed of at least two distinct structures. Judging from the part excavated so far, the building was developed in at least three phases. The excavation of this uh, structure is not yet complete, but clearly it was built in an east-west direction. A row of rooms uh, is discernible in this building, possibly storerooms. All rooms are about 5.5 meter wide inside. However, the length of the rooms is not uniform. The eastern rooms are seven meters in length on the inside, but their length increases moving west up to eight meters. The rooms have no inner access to each other and all are entered on the south. In front of the entrance to each room, short walls with benches were built. It is apparent, uh, apparent that this building had been destroyed by a strong fire. fire ravaged the northern part of the building. And uh, this building, of course, this building complex, especially with its dimensions, dimensions uh, show that it clearly was not meant for domestic habitation. There are few clues about its function since its contents were removed prior to the fire that destroyed them. Its large dimensions have no parallel in Anatolia, and it was certainly an administrative building or its annex of storage units. C14 datings uh, or radiocarbon samples taken from the wooden beams belonging to the second phase of the building date it to the 25th or 24th century BC. That is the period when Anatolia began to have closer relations with its southern neighbors. Even being able to erect such monumental structures evidenced the presence of a powerful local authority having close commercial ties with her neighbors. As mentioned before, the name of Kanish Kingdom is mentioned in the so-called Shartamhari text as a powerful kingdom in central Anatolia. So, it was, uh, this building was built, uh, supposed to be built in the 25th century and must have been destroyed by the beginning of the 23rd century BC. Above the uh, level 13, 
complex, two later monumental buildings had come to light during the excavations by Tahsin Özgür. The earlier one of these was a monumental building, was a, that, that was named as a Megaron by the excavator, uh, is dated to level uh, 12, which is uh, drawn in black in the slide. It is, its size is no smaller than its parallels at uh, Beja Sultan or in Troy. Regrettably, as Tahsin Özgür noted, the plan of the building was not entirely clear yet. Notably, its western part had been destroyed by uh, one of the largest uh, silo pit and uh, a refuse pit, uh, so it, uh, it was impossible to excavate uh, the western part of this uh, building. The excavated uh, part of the building, such as uh, here you can see a kind of uh, drawing by Mahmoud Atok, the excavated part of the building measured 20 by 22 meters. Allora, Pighetti mi ha detto che per il contratto con la Tatiana serve eh, la carta d'identità. Uh, the excavated part of this building measured uh, approximately 20 meters by 22 meters, and it is highly probable that it did not form an independent build, independent unit, but that it was part of a larger complex as yet not excavated. Judging from what is preserved, there were side white sitting benches located in front of the walls on either side of the entrance of the building. The entranceway between the benches led to a great hall, great hall uh, with a large heart at its center. Four pillars surrounding the heart supported the roof of this spacious room smaller ch chambers uh, surrounded the hall. At the side of this building, uh, another structure was found built, by, uh, built with adjoining walls. Since it is not yet uh, fully excavated, its strategic relationship to the so-called Megaron remains unknown. It was constructed with mud bricks set on a stone foundations the plaster on the walls was white sh uh, washed. No similar plan is known from any other part of central Anatolia yet. The platform benches at the entrance and depots and alabaster idols and the clay figurines found in the structure here that Tassin is good to interpret this building as a temple. Although it shows uh, a megaron plan as far as it was excavated, it is true to think that in recent excavations, this building is a complex that can be divided into at least two parts rather than a megaron. Uh, the walls are drawn in gray, uh, sorry, it's not very discernible. And uh, on the one hand, it would be more appropriate to think that it is a religious official structure, possibly on the east and on the west, a complex consisting of another building, uh, consisting uh, of storage facilities. After the destruction of this, uh, uh, this Megaron building, another monumental structure was built on top of it. Due to the class pilasters, and benches on the walls, it was named as building with pilasters by uh, Tarsin, which, which is drawn in brown. We excavated to, we started to excavate in the southwestern corner of this structure in 2015. Possibly an open air kitchen appeared immediately above some walls that are contemporary with the building uh, with the so-called Megaron belonging to level 12. Some parts of the kitchen were damaged through erosion of strata uh, in earlier trends. Still, the location of the fireplace is quite evident in the preserved parts. The northern and western outer walls are discernible. The south is not yet excavated. 
seven uh, keyhole shaped uh, fireplaces were identified in the excavated area. Pieces of wood that were pushed inside the fireplaces have survived to this day. This kitchen with numerous fireplaces was contemporary uh, with the building uh, called Pilaster Building of level 11B. The plan of this building of this open air kitchen can be compared with the Abla Palace. And uh, after this kitchen area, we continue digging in this area next to the kitchen utilities in 2017. The whole area here was uh, completely destroyed by a strong fire. In the southwestern corner, corner of the room next to the gateway, we discovered a pit hole which was surrounded by a mud brick and earthen platform which holds the pit hole stand still. In the northern face of the platform, there was a niche or an window in which you can reach to the bottom of the pit hole and uh, on the side of the pit hole, a hole was opened to take the grain from the container. And then we continued to excavate the room next to the room with the pitos to the east. And recently, during the excavations uh, conducted in 2018 to 2020, more than 100 gypsum idols and goddess statues uh, were unearthed in a five by five met meter square room in one of these monumental buildings. Since the room was heavily burned and destroyed, the conditions of the idols are not very promising. And uh, the, the disc-shaped idols, as you can see here, was not in good shape. It relieved the carvings on the body and uh, they are actually known from the previous excavations. Figurines standing on the throne which we know from the uh, previous examples and uh, surprisingly new discoveries or new carvings uh, shown in some of the idols preserved more better than the others. For example, uh, of course, uh, here you see, may not see very clearly, but uh, here you can see six uh, musicians uh, standing or sitting on their thrones and playing double flute and uh, just to be beneath them or under them, we can see the row of bulls uh, passing through. Similar Id uh, idols have been found here, one close up. Uh, and uh, similar uh, idols have been found in the previous excavations by Tarsim Özgür. And I am sure that on the once which Tasim Bey found had the same scene as well. But unfortunately, uh, the ones uh, were, we found were erased a lot. So these idols, by means of their size and the representations carved on them, contribute to the representational art of the early Bronze Age. The depictions on the sculptures, statues, and idols recovered in better condition uh, fortunately provided important information about hitherto unknown religious rituals of the early Bronze Age III period. According to the very recent uh, C14 analysis, the idols and the building where these idols have been discovered can be dated to the 23rd century or just uh, the beginning of the 21st century, which makes the findings contemporary with the Akkadian period. So these were the near discoveries and findings from the recent excavations uh, done by the Turkish team. And in accordance, accordance with the collaboration with the Milan University, the archeologist directed by uh, Professor Luca Peronel, we established a new project to understand the stratigraphy of the mount once again. The Italian archaeological project at Kultepe 
uh, of the Milan University forms part of an international collaboration uh, project with the University of Ankara. And it was, as was mentioned, uh, launched in 2019. And uh, the uh, two universities uh, collaborate in research on archaeological sites and the investigation carried out by the Italian uh, team in the September 2019, uh, here the area that we are collaborating. And here uh, the, the first year excavations in 2019 in Trench 5, located in the southern sector of the mound. The excavations allowed to start the definition of the occupation of Scythians investigating especially the Iron Age levels, that is first millennium BC and the end of the Middle Bronze Age, uh, let's say 17th to 18th century. Areas uh, of Trench 5 and of 2019 and 8 of 2020 are located immediately to the west of the uh, Middle Bronze Age building complex in which the temple of seven and the palace on the southern terrace were brought to light. Moreover, uh, in the same area, part of a building with two here, some in the uh, in the same area, part of a building with two big pitos uh, here you can see brought to light uh, was discovered in 2015 actually and the excavations uh, were stopped there. The new project uh, uh, and the main objective of the new projects in this part uh, uh, is to link the previously investigated levels with a new complete stratigraphic sequence from the final early Bronze Age to the Iron Age in order to build up a reliable chronological sequence anchored with radiocarbon datings and diagnostic pottery types of each phases. In area five, the, the three main relevant superimposed architectural phases have been identified. And uh, the, uh, in the trench uh, eight of 2020 aimed, at, uh, aimed to, to clarify the relative chronology and the stratigraphic sequence of the sculpt structures and associated deposits located to the west of the stone paved plaza. The earliest building brought to light there might be dated to Mount Level 9 at the transition between Early Bronze Age to Middle Bronze Age and ended in a conflagration, while to south a later architectural phases corresponding to the Level 8 has been identified covered by a stone building of level seven. These structures were cut to the northeast by the foundation of an imposed stone building with a markedly different orientation whose absolute chronology is still to be clarified. The part uh, excavated in so far could be tentatively interpreted as a storm sector of the complex uh, composed by two rectangular partially underground storerooms with two big pit toys still set into the floor and a large quantity of stored jars and pottery found scattered, uh, scattered uh, around uh, throughout the trench. Here, this is the area that excavated and uh, Finally, I have to show one of the sensational findings of this trench. Uh, uh, it was found in the debris of, the, of this underground uh, building. And here you can see, actually there are several pieces of decorated large basin with stamp decoration of caprice, vegetal motifs and leaf players uh, was the one of the sensational finding of 2020 by the Italian callings. Excavations in the framework of mutual agreement will continue this and in the coming years. And uh, finally, uh, before thanking, uh, I would like to announce the opening of our new exhibition, 
this Thursday in Kayseri Museum named as New Discoveries in 5,000 Years Old Kültepe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.